Some tests last two weeks. This test lasted two decades. A study in the book of James. Join us for the sermon series, The Test. So good morning, everybody, and welcome to Real Life Church. I'm Pastor Bob, and I'm leading us this morning as we continue in our study in the book of James. Now we're gonna get there in just a second, but do you have our church app? I mean, have you actually downloaded it and put it on your phone? You know you can. Here's the QR code right here. Take that picture, it's gonna take you right to the platform where you can sign up to have our Real Life Church app. Now, last week, we started a teaching series in the book of James. And now we're going to get into verses five through eight in a message that I'm entitling this week, Got Wisdom? Who hasn't that's listening right now face some type of circumstance, some type of event in your life where you're wondering how you ought to respond? I mean, think about it. In your Christian journey, Has there ever been an occasion that you wish God was standing right next to you so you could ask him a question, get a direct answer? I know all of us have faced those type of situations. And that's exactly what James is talking about. When you don't know what to do or where to go or who to turn to, James has the answer for you right there in verse five. So let's follow our teaching format and find out what does the passage say? It says, but if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But he must ask in faith without any doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord, being a double-minded man unstable in all of his ways. So what we're facing right here is James has given you an answer. He's saying, if anyone lacks wisdom, well, maybe we ought to define the word wisdom to make sure that we're all on the same page. Wisdom is a whole lot more than just knowledge about something. Wisdom involves good judgment and good sense. Wisdom is looking at it from God's point of view. And James very specifically says, if you lack wisdom, that you ought to ask God. We ought to ask him for understanding of why am I here? What am I doing? What's going on with my life? And the wisdom that we're talking about is godly wisdom. It is not wisdom that comes from man or this world. That type of wisdom needs to come from God. The point I want you to see, if any man lacks wisdom, and I believe we all do, we're to ask God. I want you to look at that word asks just for a second because I think in our English language, we don't understand this word the way that it was written. This word has an idea behind it that we are to desire, to crave, to literally beg the inferior, okay, seeking diligently from the superior. Like the poor beggar out there on the street, helpless, wanting help. That's what that word asks means. Do I really beg God? Do I really crave from God the type of wisdom that comes from him? I don't know that when I'm asking God the way this means to ask God, to literally beg him for his help. The inferior asking the superior. I got to look at that and say a lot of times, maybe that's why we are lacking in wisdom in so many different areas, because we're not asking with the right heart. When James was writing this passage, they didn't have the, the benefits that you and I have. We live in an information age where I have so much information that's available to me. I have books and magazines and the internet, and I have all kinds of things at, the, at the, just my fingertips. And maybe that's our problem also. 
we forget to ask God. And we seek out information from other things and other sources, and maybe that's why we're not certain about what God is trying to do in our life, the trials that we face. And this passage also goes on to say that God gives this wisdom when we ask him freely or liberally, or the Bible word was generously. So if I think it comes down to this, it comes down to the way that we ask God. And James says, if you're looking for wisdom this morning, there are a couple prerequisites that you have to have. And the very first one he talks about as he mentions this is that you have to ask in faith without wavering, without doubt. See, James wants us to understand that God is not some type of cosmic Santa Claus that kind of just stands there and waits to be called upon and then he responds immediately to whatever is asked. That's not God at all. Matter of fact, he says that when we come to God and we ask God for wisdom, we, we better come to him in faith. And remember that when we even approach God and we beg God, God has his own timetable and it never ever matches up with our timetable. So asking God in faith, what does that mean? It's forsaking all, I trust him. That's a great acronym, and that's exactly what faith is. Putting aside everything else or anything else, or can I say it, anyone else, I trust God. I trust him. In other words, that he is big enough for your circumstances, he is able to provide everything that you're looking for, and you can trust him regardless of the outcome. If you're really seeking wisdom, you're going to keep asking God over and over and over in faith until he reveals his answer. And he's not going to hold that against you. That's what the passage says. God doesn't hold it against us when we ask in faith. What he holds against us is when we don't ask in faith because we're like that person that James talks about is a doubter. Okay, that is tossed into the sea and is driven by the wind wherever the wind wants to take them. And that's what happens when we don't ask in faith. It calls us a double-minded person. Think about that. Double-minded? That's not how God wants us to approach Him when we're asking Him to intercede on our behalf. Am I begging God for wisdom? Am I craving that? Am I asking in faith? Am I expecting him to answer? I mean, that radically changes the way you do things. Are you asking? Where are you turning to when you ask? The second practical application is ask God. Go to God first. Go to God immediately. And the third application is ask God without doubting. Four questions I want you to think about. This is your homework, if you want to call it. Why do believers turn so quickly to the world's wisdom? Things like psychology and self-help programs when God offers his wisdom? Why is it so important that believers do mingle worldly wisdom with God's wisdom in dealing with trials? And what's at stake when we do that? Third question, it says, why is it important to look to God's word for wisdom rather than trusting your impressions or feelings? Last one, how would you counsel a doubting Christian to get back to faith in God? Where should they begin? That's your homework. I would love to know what your responses are, but I'll share you my responses on how I answered those questions next week. Why don't you pray with me? God, thanks for our time together. Thank you again for who you are. Lord, another test from James. Another test of are we asking God? I mean, are we begging God? Are we craving God? Are we desiring God for wisdom? Lord, we all need it. 
We don't understand a lot of times what's going on and why things are happening. So Lord, we need you. Help us to understand and ask without doubting and to ask in faith. God, that's so important in our Christian walk. Thanks for our time together today. God, I pray that you'll bless those who are listening. And it is in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now you wanna get ahead next week? Answer those questions, all right? Verses nine through 12. And if you got a question about what we've talked about, that opportunity is still out there. 928-295-0200, the keyword question, feel free to use that. We're checking that. I'm checking it personally on Monday morning, and I will get back to you and answer those questions that are asked, all right? God bless you guys, and see you next week. Some tests last two weeks. This test lasted two decades. A study in the book of James. Join us for the sermon series, The Test.